Whitmix's webinar, Digital Diagnostics with Three Shape, the cornerstone, the cornerstone to way more than just digital wax ups, part two. My name is Corey Lambertson. I am the manager of technical support for Whitmix Corporation, and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. I would like to begin with a few housekeeping items. First, in the upper right hand corner of your screen, you should see a questions box. Please feel free to type in any questions you may have throughout the presentation. At the end, our presentation, our present, presenter Al will be answering your questions <coughs> from the webinar. Next, if you are a CDT, this webinar is approved for one hour of CE credit toward your certification. You'll receive an email within one to two days that will tell you how to obtain your credit. Lastly, this webinar is being recorded. Within 48 hours, it'll be up on the Whitmix website in the webinar section. This morning, I have the pleasure of introducing Al Falastri, CDT who owns and operates Ceramo Arts Dental Laboratory in beautiful Lakeland, Florida. Today, Al will be covering the digital diagnostics within 3Shape, the cornerstone, cornerstone to way more than just digital wax up. This is part two of the two part series. Al, if you're ready, let's talk about digital diagnostics with 3Shape. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready, Corey, thank you. And I wanna welcome everybody who's here back for part two. Um, and again, when I was thinking about this, you know, there's there's so much in this workflow with with three shape. Uh, last time, I really decided to focus a little bit more on on, on the tricks and, and and all the tricky aspects associated with with viewing a 3D world on a 2D screen. And so this time, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that I do with this workflow from control tissue contouring, guided abutment design, basic surgical guides of aponics, transfer bases, uh, which, you know, bite blocks, a way of getting, um, you know, free and saddle uh, bites uh, for cases where we can't get really good, accurate, stable bites otherwise, and, and a few other things too. But I decided that to look at the implant part, this part was probably, so to me, is some of the most important uh, things that, that I do using this workflow. And so I'm gonna run through it. Again, this is not a course to teach abutment design. It's not a course to really teach this. It's more of an overview. And so again, like I said last time, if anybody wants to dig deeper into these topics or you have topics that you know you really want to get some more information on you really should reach out to a uh, whitmix and and ask there should there should be a place somewhere i think on the website that you can um, you can do this but but if not you know let us know that too we'll make sure that we create a portal or a spot where you can ask for uh for pro programs that you'd like to see um anyway as always i have way too much information for the time slots so off we go and i want to go through control tissue contouring and then guided abutment design in particular uh, again though this is all centered around this workflow this temporary unprepared model workflow right right down under this icon and so in this case we're doing a single central one of the one of the toughest types of restoratives to do especially when we're talking an implant and, and again i start by setting this up as just a diagnostic uh, tooth on the, on this site and we go through the typical process right first setting up the directions always important um doing my design modeling and of course we're gonna we're gonna to review last week a little bit just by hitting a couple of the key things we talked about with orientation and alignment and how it changes perspective when we're doing particularly anteriors. But, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through design at this point. Again, though, what we want to do is really try to develop a tooth that's really going to blend with the other tooth in this situation and just see where does it need to exit the tissue <clears throat> to accommodate a really aesthetic result. So we do an ideal wax up. And again, we're going to be uh, respecting the tissue and modifying some tissue. So if underneath you're not fully like beyond the tissue, so when we cut it, we're very accurate, go ahead and, and expand that out and make sure you can't see any of the model on the underneath portion as well. Okay, and then, you know, I will actually go through a little bit of, 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 a, of occlusal adjustment or, or lingual adjustment. And again, also orient this like we talked about, right? Using bond will, the 10 degrees, 100 millimeters from the condyle, midway between the bows, all that stuff, same old, same old. And then again, you know, like this, when you're looking at this and it looks pretty good, it's really not, right? It's hard to perceive that this number seven is further back than number 10 on the screen. But once we're in there articulating, we can tell we're not properly aligned so when we do things really start to change and now we have a different perspective 
And we need to make sure that we remember this, whatever we're doing in anterior, that we use our articulator, if nothing more than just gain proper alignment so that when so that what we see is really what we get because uh, things get off really quick with just a little bit of misalignment. So again, in this case, I'm kind of pretending, this case ultimately was a PFM actually, uh, but you know, this is more like what I would go through if I was doing a full contour, let's say facially layered zirconia, you know, or, or Emacs or something like that. And so <clears throat> again, trying to get the best design we can get uh, for the situation. And then I look and I notice back here that we had a little bit of, a, I had a little bit of the healing cap site uh, still visible. And, you know, I definitely respect that. If I've already got a little area in the tissue, I'm going to try to make sure that I, I cover that with my diagnostic, <laughs> if at all possible. And it actually gave me a pretty decent contour compared to this tooth here. And then when I, when I turn on my collision lines and I disappear my tooth, I can see where this, this design wants to exit the tissue. This is where my emergence needs to be for this case. And so I put my model in my hand, I look at the screen and I draw this same outline, right? This same thing from here, I'll draw it on my model. And then I want to do some tissue and this is guided tissue modification based on a real thing where we want this tooth to go. And when you start doing this, you're gonna be really surprised at how much it improves your, your, your outcomes, how much more conservative you can be with your margin placement and, and how well this really works out in the, in, in the, in the uh, results of your cases. But when it comes to modifying tissue, you've gotta be aware of what you're doing. And, and again, this is not meant to be a course on how to modify tissue. But just be aware that the interproximal tissue is typically more fibrous, and so we're a little more conservative here. You never go all the way down to the implant. You always keep a little bit of this funnel untouched in here, okay? And, and just remember that when we're, when we're moving out facially a little bit with our tissue, it's, it's going to actually stretch the tissue and the abutment goes in place. It's going to cause that tissue to, to, to move upwards or move apically. And so, you're you know, just be aware of how much you're moving, removing tissue in this area so you can drop your margins about a quarter of that amount more substantially than you might otherwise, okay? Otherwise, when you stretch the tissue, it can't, if it's thinner in particular, it can be pulled apically and you can have a little margin exposure. Um, again, this isn't a huge deal, but it's worth an awareness. So I take my, my uh, little carbide cutter and start to modify this tissue. Uh, towards this line, and again, always leaving some untouched as much as I can coming up from the, the head of the implant. And then I will actually smooth it with an instrument so I get a really nice smoothed out a funnel. And again, uh, this will, will perform, will work out really well in the mouth. So once we do that, this is the case that I did this diagnostics. We're gonna go right to a copy and reuse in three shape and um, rescan this case. Okay, and it's gonna create a number that I'm gonna write down. And I'll go through how we keep track of all this. So now when I go through and I actually scan this model that I just uh, modified, always be careful of this. If you have a hole in here, it will not cut to the tissue down the road. So if you see that, you've got to do adaptive scanning and make sure you get you have no open holes down in this socket. Okay, we also wax in the hole in the top of the uh, abutment itself so we get a floor to it. All right, and then as you proceed through this, the other scans are just there. Now, once we scan the tissue and do the scan this, we get a couple of advantages. One is we get very, very accurate tissue. This is from the stone model, okay? You never get a great result scanning a G-mask. We all know that, okay? It never seats quite right. It's never quite right. This is accurate. But while I'm doing this, this will go to the model work department and we have the GMAS made, but we've already captured this scan, all right? So as we proceed through, the other scans just pop up, okay? It was a copy and reuse, they're all there. And then at this point, I just go and, and run through the modeling of this case, okay, I model it. And I do go into the actual case that we just copied, and I'll, I always mark what this is all about on the first name. We use the last name as last name, first, first name, and this line we use as notes. So I can see them on the on the dental manager uh, when I go there, and I can see which part of the step this particular case was, all right? So <clears throat> we're gonna go through it, 
All right. And of course, I modified it. It wanted me to rescan, but of course, no. And then I'm just going to click through. It's going to place this tooth right there. Three Shape does this pretty well. Okay. And again, make sure that I, I have no ex tissue underneath because I want to cut cleanly to it. So I'll fix that. All right. And then just cut to it. <coughs> and this is a click, click, click. This is a quick thing. And then I just want to smooth my contours and make sure that I don't have any concave areas, if at all possible. And smooth that one into smooth that so I have a nice cleansable uh, contour to my to my tooth. So eliminate all the concavities that you can and try to make this smooth and cleansable. All right. So we're done with this. Meanwhile, the um, the um, G Max is being made, and I noticed that I had an area here where. I really wasn't quite following the tissue. And I noticed this is a little wider back here, so maybe I wanna actually fill this in some. So I went back and I filled this in and added a little bit. And just be aware that if you do that in three shape, don't try to cut to the gingiva again. It'll sit there and spin forever and then finally say we weren't able to do it. So if you see something like that, you're gonna to have to come uh, cut this to the tissue manually. So try to get it all done on the first shot. Now, at any rate, uh, we're done with this. We're now going to take this case, copy and reuse it, and now we're going to set this up to, to guide the abutment design. So I'll uh, do a copy and reuse, go into the case, and then change it for what I want, right? Abutment here, and then, you know, go through and change this to be what I want on this tooth, okay? It's going to be, a, 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 in this case, a PFM. We're gonna put in a abutment that we're doing. So we just set this up for exactly what we want. Make sure you go in and change this from one section to section, very important. You'll be upset if you don't. And um, and I always click off the pre-prep. It does this automatically when you copy and reuse, but the pre-prep is nothing more than the prep scan. Not quite sure why 3Shape does this, but it just makes you have to align a scan that you're not gonna use. Takes time. So if you think about it, just unclick that and then proceed, okay? <laughs> so we've got that case. And here's what we do, just keep track of it, okay? This is the original case number. It's my initial diagnostics. When I copy and reuse, it generated this, and that's the one that I adapted my diagnostics to the modified tissue, okay? Then what we're doing now is when I copy and reuse that, it generated this number, okay? We did it right away, and then this is going to be my abutment design one. And then when the abutment comes back, we're going to rescan it and adapt our modeling to that. And the reason why is because there's always milling errors. If you try making um, um, the crown, on the abutment at this step here, it's never going to fit as well as it needs to. And there's many reasons for that. Uh, the change in the anti-rotation grooves, uh, milling errors, if you have to adjust the margin on an abutment, if you're going to opaque it to uh, put a little zirconia or an Emacs on, on an opaque titanium uh, abutment, which, by the way, I'm starting to like a lot way better than, I, I'm, I'm kind of moving away from hybrids. We've had breakage, we've had issues, there's always size issues. You're always making the zirconia too thin, especially lower interiors. This is a really neat topic here about, you know, how to get away from hybrids and still get good aesthetic results. But if you do make hybrids, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> you know, you're gonna have to grind the sprue off. They're never gonna be the same. You have to come rescan that to adapt to crown to that. So this is part of our routine. Now, once you do this copy and reuse from our second diagnostic where, where we did the tissue and you stop, you have the opportunity to import scans. And I used to, but don't because it will, you're just wasting time. It'll make you do it again when you scan. You're not, you, you accomplish nothing. So just go right to scan and then, and then go import the scans you wanna import, okay? During the scanning, okay, load them down here. So we do we do scan the, the model now that, that has the G-mask made. So it's been ground away, but we have that scan, remember from the actual model when we made the modifications. And we go through, again, your abutment scan, your, your scan body scan should be small, just enough to, to align it to the tissue scan. So you all know this, and now we get to the part where we're gonna have to load the upper jaw with gingival mask, right? But we have that scan from this one, remember? This case number. This is why we write this down. So now I can load the scan, right? Go into my case number, 
go into the scans directory. From there, go to the aux scan directory. Just click, click, click right down this path, right? Three shape case number, the scans directory, the aux scan directory, and then there it is. But in that case, it was the upper prep. Remember, we rescan that modified tissue. So we'll double click that, and here it comes. So now we have this really beauty, nice, clean <clears throat> scan of the actual tissue modified on the on, on the stone model. And we align them, it's a typical thing. And then the lower jaw, it does not pull that up at this stage for whatever reason. So we're gonna load that scan, but we're gonna go right back to the same place. We're already there. Three shape will always go back to the, to the last place you were when you go to load a scan. And even on a different case, it'll go back to here. That's where it'll start. You may have to go click three shape to get a new case number to find in the future on a different case. But we want the lower antagonist. It's right there. We double click it. Boom. And it's already trimmed and everything, which is nice. Now, the occlusion is, in this case, we had an articulator. So we, we use the uh, articulator scanning uh, thingy in a three shape. It makes you do this. It, it moves the arm on the scanner, which you know if you've done this. But remember that those two scans taken for left and right bite on the articulator they, they don't follow through these copy and reuse they're only available on the initial case so that's where you have to go to find those scans and load them okay so i click the load icon i navigate to the original case which was 668 19 and then same thing go into scans go into aux scan and then you'll see your your right and left bite scans okay here and then it's asking for the left double click it it pops in uh you go to the next one hit your load icon it'll take you right back there last place you were double click on the right scan load that scan <coughs> and then align them and you're off and running okay you do have to go back through that process here now so you're done you're ready to design your abutment you double click and you see this error message right the bay in a three shape um and like it's like what when i first first saw this i thought ah oh, damn this isn't gonna work and then i realized and i think this has to do with having a network where your scan computer and your design computer are in two different places and, and it's, it's a thing that happens across at least my network but what but I found out if you do see this, you just go back into your case, hit rescan, and what it'll do is the little wheel will spin down here, the little status bar will go across, and it'll check, 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 check your things, and it'll just, without doing anything, in about a minute, you'll see your inspect icon checked. As soon as that happens, you can leave and go start designing, and it will work. Okay, so if you run into that, don't panic. Just rescan, let it do its thing. Don't have to do anything, and then just leave. And then once the, once the, uh, the inspect is checked, so it'll work just fine. Now we're going to start our abutment, guided abutment design. And it does a good job of bringing in the diagnostics, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> that we had from before. If you want to make a couple changes, you can on your contours. And then I just follow what I've got because this was based on a real thing, on a real diagnostic and, and gave me basically what I want. Now, I'm going to just digress a touch to talk about this. Okay, under advanced, it pulls up this dialog box. And within this dialog box are sh shoulder radius and fillet radius, okay, which are these areas of the crown. Okay, so uh, they default to really kind of weird numbers. Like I think maybe 0.4 and 0.3, they're very rarely the right numbers here. You should always look at this and here's why. Okay, always make them both 0.6. I used to use a bigger number, unnecessary, okay? And why? Because the tool that's going to be milling this is a 0.6 diameter tool. So if you are 0.6, so if you make this radius 0.6, it will fit exactly with this tool, all right? And that's where it's most important, all right? But the top fillet, also a 0.6, just gives us a nice rounded line angle, and in digital, rounded is good, okay? So this will accommodate the milling procedure very well and <clears throat> avoids this kind of stuff. We've all seen this, right? This drill compensation ditch that's made in our, in our milled things. And of course, the reason why is because when you have a sharp line angle, the drill has to go deeper to make sure you clear that area so it'll fit. So it always mills out extra stuff in here, <clears throat> which is, and this can make your fit less than ideal. 
And so it's a good conversation to have with doctors too. Is show them this. Say, hey, look, doc, you need to be around these corners, and here's why. It prevents this excessive space around, and prevents us from having this ditch inside of our our crowns. And when you go look at what you, at your actual abutment, and you start putting die spacer on, you'll notice that there's no extra die spacer. There's no drill compensation worm going across here. What that means is is that your fit of your crown to your abutment will be really rock solid and intimate with no extra space and you'll get more stable fit of crowns to abutments. It's a simple thing, but it's really important. <laughs> Excuse me. So when we go into parametric and we start designing, of course, you know, I ghost out the model or disappear the model, ghost in my abutment so I can see, I mean, my diagnostic so I can see where it is, but it gives us this nice tissue contour lines. Now, if there's a big difference between a tissue contour line and, and the crown and the actual diagnostics, I will typically go with the tissue Okay, sometimes I may say, no, I, I want this contour. So occasionally you got, you got to make a decision, but nonetheless, now we can just set our, our margins where we want, you know, in this case, equal gingival on, on, a, on, a, on a proximal surface or sub gingival what you want. Then you can click hiss and you can actually, just with your mouse wheel, you can follow your contours of your tissue. So we do this, have a process for this, which we can do in a different webinar, how to actually go through and really set your margin, uh, how far sub gingival, where do you go equal gingival, how do you do all this? But for now, I, I do all that first and really adapt this sub gingival part of my abutment to my tissue, which was directed by the diagnostics. Then I do what I got to do to get my top cap right. Okay, right, stretch it up, do what you got to do, cut it. But again, I want you to notice this. We're staying about three quarters of a millimeter sub gingival all around here, equal gingival on the lingual, but this shape, I doubt you would do that if you weren't guided into it. But this shape is based on the diagnostics and it's gonna give us a seamless continuation from crown to margin to abutment to tissue to interface. And you're gonna have really, really nice cleansable um, results with this. So <clears throat> again, I ghost in the crown. I look at it and then start doing my cross sections to cut where I need to do my plain cuts to get my room. Okay, I'm cool with 0 0.5, 0 0.6 on a lingual. I want 1.2 here if I can get it. You do what you do, but then we have to smooth this off, right? So we've lost the radius that we set up in parametric. So uh, we wanna restore that, this 0.6, uh, radius is 0.6 curvature. So if you set your smooth tool at, at half that, 1.32, it just this is where it goes. Okay, when you slide this bar, it'll stop right there. <laughs> That's the size you want to do to smooth these off. And then you'll have that same result with your die spacer and you'll have intimate, con you know, um, uh, joining between the crown and the abutment for the most stable fit. Still though, I'm a big believer in anti-rotation grooves. People have different ways of doing it. I use a five millimeter cylinder and three shape doesn't have a five millimeter cylinder, but you can find them online. You can make one if you've got uh, a little 3D drawing program. Make yourself a five millimeter by 10 millimeter cylinder or get one. I've got one, three shapes got it. There are, get it anywhere. And you can import this through control panel into your tools for abutments and create this. I also created one for a 2.5 because that's the size we want for a screw hole access on a screw minimal crown. And they don't give you a 2.5, they give you a three and a four, okay? So, so make a 2.5, make a 5, import them in, get help from your reseller if you need it, and then use that. And I like it because it makes a nice, broad um, <clears throat> anti-rotation groove. And on this central, if I've got room, I put two. I, don't, I want this thing to be freaking stable, all right? And, and of course, there's one thing to consider, which is the sharp line angles that creates, but I'll address that later. It's not a problem. Anyway, at this point, like I said, I'm gonna rescan the actual abutment and readapt all this to it after we get it back. So now I don't care about this. I just click through so I can get to my abutment, okay? And, I, and I'll zip them up typically. You don't have to, you can drag and drop all this. However you, whoever does your abutments, whatever, send it off to them. I use Argon for a lot of things. They got a great little interface, but just whatever. 
you get this done, your abutment comes back. And one thing I want you to notice is the, the nice conservative uh, margin placement, okay, which trust me, when you go through this, this, these steps, it works out beautifully in the mouth. Now we stuck it in, we looked and went, hmm, here's a little place, what's wrong? Is it, you know, this was based on the, 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 the scan of the stone, but this is fitting pretty good and you'll see things. I mean, there's, you know, stuff happens. And so we'll fix this a little bit. And <clears throat> So uh, I'll take the abutment case, this one here, where, where we did our abutment, do a copy and reuse again, right? And then this time I'll write in here what this is. This is the rescan, all right? And then just go through and set it the way you want it. You know, I click on the tooth, up pops what I have. I want to eliminate the abutment because I'm just making the crown, right? I'm rescanning the actual abutment and going to readapt my crown. So just click the abutment icon to remove it. You don't have to clear this. Just click that, it'll go away. Double check your settings, your good. Scan data exists. Do you want to rescan? Yes. And just go through the scan of the actual abutment, okay? And the, the die. And then this one I want to show you that when they mill this, we have these sharp line angles. Remember at the floor using that cylinder? The mill uses the 0.6. It can't do this sharp. It's going to leave this nice and round and really smooth. It will just happen when the abutment's made. So you don't have to, you don't have to stress over having sharp line angles where you've made these anti-rotation grooves using that 5 millimeter cylinder. Okay, this is just the, the, the waxed in screw hole, which you have to do, right? You can't scan a hole. So we put a little bit of scannable wax in there and then go through the process, scan the die, blah, blah, blah. And here's our final case now with a scan of our abutment. So we go through the modeling process. Click through, there's that, okay. Again, I'll show you how nice that comes out when you use that five millimeter tool for uh, their anti-rotation groove and with a drill compensation of 0.35 it's really smooth because a 0.6 millimeter tool at the facility that milled this milled that so it's all going to kind of come together it's not going to be sharp like this okay it's going to be nice and rounded because that's the process of, of milling this abutment and when you start this it'll place your tooth but it'll be uh, more like a thin shell it has a gap here um, and of course, when you when you go to your margins, and connect to your margins, it's going to suck that in. I really wish Three Shape didn't do that, but they do. So you do have to go through with an add tool. It says smooth, but it's the add tool, and fill in all these these little concavities. Check your contacts. You know, go back, check your occlusion. You know, uh, you can recheck this at this point. You know, in this particular case, this is going to be a PFM, so I wouldn't do this. But just to show the pictures, just double check that, you, that you, you know, put it back into your articulator, look at what you've got, make sure that you like what you see, okay? And then do your, in this case, did a proper cut back, okay? Did clean it up, got it like I wanted it. Again, it's going to be PFM in this case. Now, because it's PFM, I'm going to want to make, want to make a matrix. So I will... Um, run back through this, don't cut it back, make a full contour, send that to the mill, she'll mill that up, or you can print it so I can make a, a matrix for the ceramist to follow uh, when they're restoring these contours. You know, you don't have to do this, of course, all right? And this is just the abutment in here. Actually, I think this might be the metal work. I'm not sure, but we all know what a matrix is all about. And then here's the opaque coping that we made. And again, um, you know, from here, a little bit of a little bit of the uh, uh, of the margin was showing, but it was being held up a little bit by the uh, the, the G mask. But again, really conservative margin placement. You know, we all know that 90% of implant failures are due to retained cement. So, um, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, here comes the idea for the screwmentable crowns, right? So that the doctor can cement the crown just contacts, do his whole thing, right? And then you can take it out through a, a access hole, clean the cement and put it back. I think a lot of that, yeah, it, it creates a, a retrievability, but I think a lot of that whole technique was because people were scared to place margins conservatively because, oh, heaven forbid, you should have a, see a margin. Trust me, with this approach, you won't. And we can keep them quite conservative and have really stellar clinical results and a cement line that's easily cleansable. 
All right. And again, this little spot we dealt with before, it turns out that we didn't really want to go in there. But, but remember, this tissue does not represent what's in the mouth. It represents the ideal contours that we want. Now, if we could go back and do all this <clears throat> during the healing pre-surgically and actually have a doctor and, and, a, and a surgeon that would talk to us, okay, we can make custom healing caps to do this for us, which is what you want to do. But it ain't what we always get. I wish we had more of that going on, but we don't. So it's up to us to try to, you know, what is it? Make a, a purse out of a sow's ear with most of the cases that we get. They're just, they're just not ideal. So we need to do all this. Now, I do leave, uh, I like a little lingual collar and equigingival margins on the lingual, not aesthetic. I go to health rather than aesthetics back here. But once we start to come in in approximate, we start to go subgingivally. And we're, and usually I'm about, about 0.75 millimeters subgingival on the buckle. Right at a millimeter. Now, I asked the doc for a pick because I wanted to see the tissue, right? Nope. You know, we just got this, which the, the result turned out okay. I mean, perfect, no, but acceptable, yes. So <clears throat> I had another case, though, that was really not ideal, but I want to show this for you to look at this conservative margin placement. This is a hybrid, and it was back when we were doing Emacs hybrids, which I don't do anymore. They're just not strong enough, okay? I just, issues, so I, I do them in zirconia, but nonetheless, what I'm interested in here is his margin placement. Now, this was the crown put in, and the crown was a fail, all right? We, we, we redid these contours. Go figure, I don't know, you know, just a bad day. But when we redid it and we got it in the mouth, you know, it was, the blend was okay. But to me, the main thing is this, super conservative margin, yet doesn't show super cleansable in terms of cement and the right contours so the patient can cleanse it. This will be a long-term success, all right? Now, when it comes to posteriors, I, I really don't want to spend too much time on this, okay? Again, same thing, tip over married model. We're going to do the same process, <clears throat> and this was a little tricky because we have a really lingually placed implant back here, okay? So when I do my diagnostics, I really want to try to create the most ideal contours I can with the tissue in mind, and with this, I got to come just, I got to come lingual enough just far enough to, to capture this, right? <clears throat> and do my contours, get it designed like I want, try to get it ideal, um, and at this point, you can go ahead and do your occlusion uh, like this. For the, These are going to be full contour zirconias on opaque abutments. Uh, you could do this later. i go ahead and do it now because it'll follow me through my copy and reuses. So at the last step, I see my um, – I put on my collision lines, disappear my teeth. Here's my exit – contour lines where I want to exit the tissue on these. If I if I think I'm too much, I may go back and try to bring this up. But to me, this is good. Uh, we've got to be a little careful what we're going to do here, be conservative. But I do want my crown to, to kiss this on, on its way down to the interface. And so I just look at the screen. I look at that picture and I draw the line on here. And I thought I would look and see if I did this well. It's not bad, right? This is what was in the computer. This is the line I drew and done, okay? Again, we copied, reuse. We adapt the crowns to the modification I did on the tissue. Um, at a later date, maybe we can go through the considerations for making those adjustments. But basically, I want no convex areas, everything concave. I want to swoop this down and, and just kiss the tissue and go to the head of that abutment, to, to the margins rather, the abutment. And again, when you're set way far lingual like this, don't um, try to go real far subgingival because it's, it's going to create a, um, a, a contour that is not very cleansable. Again, we're going to then take that. We're going to put the scan bodies in. We're going to we just right through change the case, import my scans like we mentioned before, go back to the, the previous case to get in my scans, my tissue, my bite, Click, 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 run through this. Okay, I've got my abutment, and now that was my modified tissue, and I'm going to do, do my abutment design. So three shape pulls those crowns in. Okay, I use them to guide uh, my design. You notice how far lingual um, that one was here. 
And again, when you're doing a tooth, especially a molar that's maybe a little bigger, go ahead and always pull in your, your cylinder, your uh, blank, so you can make sure you're not outside your blank. I mean, that's that, that's just a, a pain in the neck phone call when your, um, your um, abutment milling company calls you and says you're outside the blank. <laughs> so anyway, again, we're going to do the five millimeter anti-rotation anti -rotation grooves. And this made some really kind of crazy looking abutments, right? I mean, it, it's even worse than this when you look. They look like they're just going all over cattywampus, all in the wrong place. But these are based on what we actually have, okay? So when we go back through, we adapt our modeling to this. We get a nice little, we get a nice contour, a nice zirconia crown that blends well with all of this, okay? When we get on the G-mask, it's like, wow, you know, this is all good. And remember our margin, especially on this one, it's set way back because uh, it was lingual implants. So this tissue is just, the, the, the contour is just kissing the tissue and then going really smoothly to the margin of the abutment, all right? Um, and again, I, you know, I'm waiting for clinicals on these, on these abutments, on these cases, so we can look at them. Um, long story, I had a small disaster with the clinical pictures I have accumulated. I, I lost them all and, um, uh, computer, um, crash. But anyway, um, this is just some ideas of showing conservative margin placement and then sort of still how we can hide that with proper guided implant design. PFM here, right, maybe a little opacity there, but but you're going to have really nice results <clears throat> with this approach. Now, sometimes, like this one, is a multiple abutment case with a cantilever, and it gets really hard to look at the screen and try to draw this. There are times, I mean, I gave it a shot, right, where this is going to be based on the collision lines that I saw on the computer, but I want this exactly right. So I actually took the time to, to mill the full contour <clears throat> along with something else that we were doing that day and then place it on, right? Tra traced around it. And so the blue line represents what, what we really have, okay? And I missed it a couple places, particularly here, but it is something you can do if you really wanna get this accurate and really you know, modify your tissue based on your diagnostics. Put that back on after modifying it. I can see, yeah, we're gonna have a nice result here. It's gonna look good. Um, little, let me just digress a little bit. We do use the gyrofoam form model system, which in itself is spectacular. And I actually took one of their interface plates with the magnet that's made for mounting and screwed it to a, a three-shape scan plate to make me a custom interface plate for putting our um, models on and always having them in the same place. Now, I mentioned that three shape is pretty good at aligning one scan, a copy and reuse, and bringing your diagnostics in. Uh, it ain't perfect. If you can come up with a way to take your model system and create an interface plate that you always use for these processes, you will find that your alignment of the modeling from rescan to rescan to rescan and scan and copy and reuse will be perfect. If you don't and you have these models in different places every time you scan and you're counting on the three shape software to align everything right, you're going to be disappointed uh, sometimes and you're going to have to adjust things a little bit. Uh, on the on the next step to have them in the exact right place. I like to avoid that. Not everybody can do this, but if you're, you know, whatever you've got, if you can come up with a clever way of, of having a, a custom interface plate so when you scan these implant cases, the model's always in the same place on that plate, it'll be an advantage. And again, conservative margin placement, but um, I'm not going to really spend any more time on this. And I apologize that it was kind of fast and I breezed over it. But if you guys want to dig into this in more detail and slower, we can at a later date on a different um, webinar. But this one is huge, okay? Uh, the basic surgical guide is what I call it. And it's been really difficult to get surgeons and doctors to coordinate and work with me on these things. We, um, I invested in a, in a, a guided surgical guide software like Implant Studio uh, years ago and had moderate success, but get a lot of um, blowback on it, actually. I don't know, they don't want to spend, the, I don't know what it is. I mean, some guys are really gung-ho, a lot are not. And so the ones that are not, I offer this as a solution. And again, it's based on 
getting the same old thing. It's based on this, right? Just the whole <clears throat> tempo prepared model workflow. We set it up. And of course, I've got these three teeth that are, have, are the edentulous. And these I put there because they're what's going to index on top of the unprepared tooth. Okay, so when we start this process, again, get your insertion direction right. Three shape throws me in some teeth, right? They're sort of everywhere. And I'm going to bury these ones for now <clears throat> because I want to model these and get the occlusion right. And if these other teeth that are ultimately going to be my index on top of, the, uh, of my unprepped teeth are in the way, they'll get in the way when you're doing your occlusion. So <clears throat> they're just underneath here. You just can't see them. I go through my modeling. I get this like I want back here. Again, this is pre-surgical right which is really what we want right guys and then i pull these teeth back up i just smooth them all out i just make them a continuous thing make sure they're thick enough with a little bit of a, a, a 2d cross section <clears throat> okay make my connectors nice and heavy and then cut to the tissue so i have my my teeth and then my uh, overlay on top of my unprepared teeth like this and then i cut my holes and I'll, I, I, I like three millimeter holes for these. And as we go through the hole cutting, all right, just take the time. You can actually disappear things. You can see where you kind of like the tissue. This is based on just, you know, what we know from bone and what we see. I place these the best I can, parallel them up, get the holes nice, okay? And, you know, look at my ridge, kind of place them where I'd like. And in this case, did all three because uh, the surgeon can pick what sites he wants, whatever two sites he wants, or three, whatever. But I'll generally go ahead and put a hole in multiple teeth, give the surgeon some options for where he goes. <coughs> Cut these holes, <clears throat> okay? And there we go. And then print this thing, all right? In the, uh, in the clear um, guide material, or in the clear split material, whatever you happen to like, print it up. And then uh, put it on the model, make sure it fits good. I do all my adjusting pre-cure uh, before I've gone to the light cure unit. It's just easier to do. It's a little bit softer. And I generally will cure on the model. But even though I put three millimeter holes in here, they, they are not that accurate for whatever reason. Okay. And I found that I got to go back through with just run a little three millimeter drill through there to clean these holes up so they're perfect. And there's a reason for that. Uh, one of the things I was looking to do was figure out how to show this angulation and show this in a cone beam or an x-ray because we wanted to do that. And believe it or not, uh, it works out good. And of course, this shows curing it after I've adjusted it, which it's not. Okay, What should be in here is a model with the finish down uh, guide on it. Okay, but just hey, we cure it after we're done with all that. And then here's the thing that's worked out pretty cool. Um, I take some Jet XR acrylic, any kind of X-ray, X-ray opaque acrylic, and I inject it in a standard cocktail straw, which guess what? They're three millimeters in diameter, right? There's some luck for you. And just stick them up and goosh it out to the top. And let, so now these straws are filled with radio opaque acrylic. I guess you could put bare, I don't know, whatever, but that, this works. And then put the straw in the hole. They fit nice and snug. Mark them, cut them and put these into these holes, <clears throat> okay? So what happens when this is given to the surgeon, he puts this in the patient's mouth and part of the cone beam process, he can actually see these, these lines, boom, boom, boom in the cone beam because they stand out. <clears throat> and if he's gonna do, use some design software, he can see exactly where we want these holes, what the angulation is. It's, it's, a, it's a great tool. And, <clears throat> excuse me, if he's not gonna design his own guide, this can go to the mouth. You just push these straws back out, re-expose the holes. It can go to the mouth. It's given to the surgeon. And he can put this in place after he flaps. He can, he can put a tool through there, see where it hits the bone. He knows where his bone densities are. He knows what teeth he wants. And it just gives them a guide. Even if, they, like, like I say, when they don't want to pay for a guided guide, I'll give them this. OK, I can reuse this, by the way, right when I do the actual case. But um, you'd be surprised at how much improved or implant placement is since we're giving this to them. Hey, here it is. Take it. OK, use it. And, you know, and then and then it trust me and, and, and everything will be better. And again, 
we can reuse this for the actual prosthesis when we do it. So you're not wasting your time here, all right? You can put some, you know, like like some some uncured, some unfilled resin to shiny this up if you want, whatever you like to do, and send it off. So I'm telling you, these things work really good. Uh, just got to get them um, into the the idea of, uh, of actually doing this and doing some things pre-surgically, which ain't always that easy. Now, this same workflow in diagnostics, this was a mock-up, but when you're doing a mock-up and the patient buys it, you know, here we need to do some crown lengthening. It was obvious. I mean, I sent this picture to the doc and said, hey, look, if we can crown lengthen here a little bit, it'd be great. Well, you want a guide for that. So when you produce this, you can send this along. Uh, the, the, the periodontist or the dentist, if they do their own thing, they can put this in place in the mouth and see exactly where you want them to go with the tissue. Okay, and it works. It works really, really well for a crown lengthening guide. All right, and it also worked as the um, as the as the mock up to sell the case in the first place to the patient. So we pr we printed it, you know, for them to the doctor to put to put on like a snap on smile, and then used it to make the 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 reduction guide for the tissue. Now here's a case where, you know, come on, right? <laughs> the doctor, he wants to save some money, right? So he has his assistant do the wax up for the temps on a cuspid to cuspid case. And this is kind of what you get, right? So I got these temps and I went, oh, come on. I, I said, I said, you know, I can't do this. He goes, man, you know, I don't want to remake all these temps. I go, no, I, 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 I feel you, I got it. Let me take a look at this, right? And so I look at the model, and of course, it's also under contoured. It's, it's terrible. And, you know, we don't want that. We want to be able to, you know, have a, a test drive on, on, on our aesthetic proposal. So I use diagnostic prepared model just to go on top of those temps, right, and make a little shell thing that we then milled in PMMA that fills out our contours, gets us proper looking teeth, right? So we go from that to that, all right, staying well short of the margins. And I gave this to him, right? He goes, oh man, great. So he brought the patient in, just roughed it up a little bit, bonded that PMA onto the acrylic and boom, right? You know, we got something that we can test drive. You know, we can check different things on this case, decide it's what we want and a little toothy, but that's the guy's smile, right? This was just turned out to be really great for the aesthetic proposal. He liked it, wore that around and the case turned out to be a success. Now, ovate ponics are something that, you know, I like to do, but you need to control this. And so in this case, right, we did our, our diagnostic proposal, same thing, table prepared model, cut it to the tissue, and then I come back and establish the kind of bull nose that I want on these teeth, okay? Get this just like what I want. Um, <clears throat> It sticks through, kind of check how it's coming through the tissue. And again, we have some abutments here and here. So we'll do, use this to design those as well. And I milled this in some wax, put some indicator on it, put it on the model, modify until I create these sockets based on something real that I can actually do, okay? And again, we used it to mark our emergence for our implants. We did some creative tissue contouring, same old, same old, right? Ended up with a case that's gonna end up really being nice and very aesthetic and our opponents will come out of the tissue. You know, again, used this uh, for the abutment design, right? Did my framework, but mainly I wanted to get the tissue properly um, uh, modified for these of eight ponics. And again, no uh, clinicals from this. And I actually forgot to get the lab shot. So that's all you get to see, but it turned out nice. And the last thing I'll go through that we do a bit is what I call a transfer base or a bite block or whatever. So how often do you get a case, lower uh, bilaterally dentulous free and saddles with a big plunk of, of, of stuff. You can't mount this thing. So, you know, you've got the model go ahead and just set this up, right? With all these teeth. And I kind of like having tooth form. And this is pretty quick, boom, boom, boom. You just leave the teeth of the linguals here like a wing on a, on a Maryland bridge, smooth this up, produce this thing, print this thing, right? Of course, it's shy of occlusion by, you know, a couple millimeters. Uh, you know, again, I, I can't go through all the steps. I just wanna show you some ideas. So we make sure this is thick enough because this is like a lingual bar. And he takes it to the mouth, takes me some bites, 
right, with this thing in the patient's mouth. And now I can mount this and I have a good, accurate, stable mounting for this case. And I can see we're uh, getting up on the hour. Again, apologies for this being so fast and not really having time to spend time, but like an hour, you just really can't dig in. This is mainly to give you guys some ideas for what you could use this workflow for, some ideas on how to do a better job um, controlling tissue contouring and controlled abutment design based on that tissue contouring and diagnostics. <clears throat> And then, you know, trying to at least, you know, maybe get a little better result in what we're doing. And there's more places to use this. I mean, this is really a cool workflow. And the sky's the limit. Just use your imagination. You can apply it to lots of things. I've made uh, night guards using this, right? Full arch, smooth it off. And in fact, in ways, I almost like it better than um, trying to use the splint designer in three shape, which is just lousy for adjusting the splint because you don't get your 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 design tools available to adjust occlusion. If you've tried it, it's it really is kind of lacking. So um, again, you know, think about this workflow. You know, use it. You know, when you can, use it where you can, and um, and go for it, guys. And with that, I'm done. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Al. Excellent presentation. Uh, so we, let's see if we have any questions uh, from the presentation thus far. So let's see here. Give me one second. I'll expand the questions bar. All right. So we have a question. Uh, why not use coping or tabletop for surgical guide? By using these, it avoids... Uh, sorry, the question got cut off. Uh, it avoids undercuts. Oh, so does this. Okay, I mean, when you when, that's that's why you have to take so much time in um, when you uh, set your direction at the beginning of this. When you cut to the model, it will cut based on that insertion direction, so it will avoid the undercuts. Okay, which you can do. Hey, look, in three shape, there are many ways to skin cats. Okay, and there's many ways to achieve a goal. And and again, like, hey, this, none of this is the only way. This is just, you know, a technique and an approach that, you know, has given me some good results uh, consistently, which is why I do it. OK. And yeah, you could do that. Now, one problem with coping is that you have to define margins. You have to do those things. I like the temple prepared model uh, because the edge of the crown just ends up wherever it is based on the contour. And it's, it's, it's oftentimes a whole lot easier not to have to know where your margin is going to be at first before you actually do the modeling because we don't know. That's the whole point. We don't know how our contours are going to come out. Um, and that answer is based on what I think I understood from the question. If it's wrong, uh, apologies. But that's why I default back to this workflow so much because I don't have to have a margin. I don't have to have any of that. It just ends up where it ends up, and it, it gives me a nice result. Very good. Um, so far, that is the only question, Al. Uh, just a reminder, if you are a CDT, this webinar is approved for one hour of uh, CE credit towards your certification. You will receive an email within one to two days that will allow you to tell how, uh, we'll tell you how to obtain your credits. Uh, it looks like that's it, Al. We appreciate your time and, and thank you once again for uh, doing a presentation for Whitmix. Yeah, sure. And just, you know, just again, to repeat myself, if anybody, you know, is interested in digging in deeper in just portions of this in more detail, more of a how-to, we can certainly do that, but you got to let us know. Awesome. There we go. Very good. Thank you, Al. Appreciate your time. Thank you, buddy. Take care. Take care. Bye now. Mm -hmm.